what we do. My name is Linda and I'm from ISPE Singapore affiliate. And uh, we have a lot of events posted throughout the year. We've got a few what we call technical Tuesdays coming up, as you can see on the screen, as well as another webinar on steam sterilization coming up in April and a quality risk management training also in April. We've also got a women in pharma session, which is open to all men and women. Um, it's a very inclusive session as well as a social event, which is the Singapore Quiz Night. So we welcome you to join us at these events, as well as to our annual event, which we're preparing right now, which will be in August. And this will be a virtual event, as well as in person at Suntech Singapore. We'd also like to thank our sponsors of the affiliate who helped to make our activities possible. Uh, without them, um, you know, we would need to have extra, we would need to find funding. Uh, so we do appreciate their uh, support throughout the year. So that's thank you to No Deviation, Rapasa and Steris. Um, now I'd like to hand over to Melissa from Gettinger and uh, she will make the introductions. Exactly, thank you. I will just share my screen and the presentation just here. All right, great. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone, depending on where you're located. Um, welcome and thank you for joining us in uh, today's webinar on a septic transfer, minimizing the contamination risk. I am Melissa and I will be your host during today's webinar. Um, so a short quiz um, will be organized at the end of the presentation on uh, methity.com followed uh, by a Q&A session for you to have some time to um, ask your questions to our experts. And uh, today our experts uh, joining us are Charles Davio and uh, Gabrielle Perra. So a bit of more information about them. Uh, Charles Davio is an application specialist with uh, getting isolation technology and transfer system. He has uh, an in-depth knowledge of aseptic transfer activities as well as uh, containment in pharmaceutical and nuclear applications. Um, he has been with Gettinger La Calen since uh, 1996 and held various positions in engineering, uh, project management, and sales and market support, especially in Asia. And he is graduate from Angers Technical University in France. And now Gabriel Peras is technical sales engineer um, within Gettinger, and he is specialized in getting in a deputy transfer system. Uh, in the past years and a half, he has acquired in-depth knowledge uh, in DPT and aseptic transfer activities um, in the pharmaceutical application. And he has uh, he's been with Gettinger La Calen since 2018, working with filling line manufacturers and component manufacturers, and also supporting getting. All right. Um, I will now uh, hand over to uh, Gabriel Perra. Thank you, Melissa, for this introduction, and, and thank you, Linda, uh, uh, and the ISP uh, for giving us this opportunity. Um, and let's start with the agenda today. Uh, we will start with an introduction on aseptic transfer, the recent trends. Then we would like to give you some insight on what can be transferred and how. And we will continue um, with some leak tightness uh, operating principle and safety cons considerations. Then we pro will provide an overview of the rapid transfer port solution. And this will be followed by some uh, insight on the ring of concern, what is it and how to manage it. And we will end up with some recommendation on how to ensure validated leak type transfer. And let's start with the trends in aseptic transfer. And these trends are very much linked with the biopharma revolution in medicine, which have brought a great advance um, in, in medicine, especially in cancer treatment. 
or in rare disease treatment. Uh, and this uh, is also um, uh, driving many challenges for the industry, especially because we have production in much smaller batches with complex process and very high added value. And also um, the drugs uh, often has to be injected. This will have to be sterile. However, that cannot withstand terminal sterilization. This is why the whole process has to be aseptic. And this is also one of the reasons why we have this trend uh, from traditional clean room to production under wraps or as isolator. Indeed, we used to have a production into a clean room with bags, um, uh, bulk component bags delivered on the production site, open on the clean room, and then inserted uh, into the filler. And now we move uh, to production on the isolator where component and part are brought into single-use ported bags or sometimes stopper processor. So this is a, really a change to improve uh, particles management and contamination management. And this trend is confirmed by a recent survey from the ISP, which indicate that uh, in 2020, virtually no system uh, have been delivered with a form of wraps or isolator. Uh, this is, of course, a great news for uh, patients and product safety. Um, and this is really the main trend in field of aseptic transfer. And this trend is also supported by the guidance uh, the FDA, which recommends production under isolator and define uh, what is the cleanliness level of an isolator and also the cleanliness level of the background of the isolator. And also, uh, we can also look at on the side of the European guidance, who also uh, recommend to have all aseptic process performed under isolator. And rapid transfer for technology is one of uh, the approved and recommended technology um, to introduce or remove uh, material from an in the isolator. Uh, if we step a little bit back and look at the source of contamination in the pharma production line, we have uh, two main sources of contamination. The first one is the human factor. This is, of course, because human can carry on some contamination, both microbials and particulate contamination and human also is a potential source of error and the second source is the environmental factor uh, because outside of the isolator still this is uh, this is another sterile area and um, we need to manage uh, the risk of bringing on some contamination from the outside of the isolator to the inside of the isolator and aseptic transfer, also known as sterile transfer, can mitigate both of these risks. And this is really important because this transfer step is a critical step um, for, the, uh, for the process safety. Because when we introduce material uh, in the isolator, this material may be exposed both to the human and to the environment, so the outside of the isolator. And at th this stage, a breach in sterility can have great consequences, such as a full batch loss. And of course, in the end, it's also the patient safety, which can be compromised. Therefore, this is really critical uh, during this stage to make sure that all the risk is under control. Uh, I will now hand over to Charles, who will share with you the application on of sterile transfer. Thank you, Gabriel. Uh, good morning, good afternoon to everybody. So the question is, um, what can be transferred and how transfer it? So if, if we look at the uh, pharma process, most of the time during the fill and finish, uh, the component need to be transferred in an aseptic way, our um, containers, the bottles or the vials, uh, stoppers, caps, and, um, and the liquid itself, the product itself, which is more liquid, and this is a product itself. And then uh, quality required some environmental monitoring uh, during uh, the filling operation. And at the end, some cleaning material, uh, samplings, without forgetting that more and more uh, filling machine part needs to be sterilized outside because in isolator it's most of the time bio decontamination. <laughs> so most of the time, some 
machine part needs to be sterilized outside, for example, in autoclave, and then placed in a sterile way inside the fill and finish area. And without forgetting at the end, some uh, transfer is needed to um, toxic application, uh, like powder, toxic powder, and big volume need to be transferred during some uh, phase of the processing. Um, okay, we just have an issue with a click, apparently. Uh, okay, so uh, the question is how uh, is done and how is we can ensure the system is um, big tight. So uh, basically, the concept of the RTP consists in one container, which is a mobile part, on one alpha port. Uh, the RTP system is based on the interaction alpha beta. Each one is separately equipped with a door on the lipsil to ensure independently the leak tightness. So the fixed part, which is the alpha, this is the interface between the gray area and the sterile area. This is a kind of inlet gate inside as a sterile environment uh, currently an isolator. The mobile part is a beta, and the beta is a transporter, the container uh, used to uh, transport uh, in close in a close volume in a closed system uh, and leak tight system. Sorry, to be connected to the to the alpha port. Um, just to mention that the connection alpha and beta is leak tight thanks to the design, thanks to the specific lip seal design. So how it works? This is a, the question. Who works uh, the RTP transfer system? At first, the beta and the alpha are separate and separately leak tight. The beta container is, if we look on the, on the sketch here, the beta container is a beta flange in orange color, a beta door in red and the lip seal with ensure the leak tightness in orange. The alpha flange is in green. So the alpha port is a fixed part, the interface. So the alpha flange is in green, the alpha door is in blue, and the blue uh, lip seal on the alpha. So the two parts are separate. First operation is to approach the beta container to the alpha port, lock it, connect by 60 degrees rotation for mechanical locking. And in the meantime, the combination of the lip seal, the combination of the lip seal will avoid any surrounding contamination. So then they are connected. We can open the alpha door and the blue lip seal, when it's open, will guarantee the leak tightness between the two doors to avoid any contamination by the outside gray area. So now let me show you the video. Let's start. So uh, this is a video showing uh, the connection. First is approach of the beta container, then rotation for docking and connection, and view from inside, or inside opening of the alpha port when the two doors are connected together. Some detail about the handle or safety security mechanism. I will explain later why we have some safety mechanism to avoid any wrong operation. So then transfer the product from inside or from outside. It works in both ways. So we can transfer in and transfer out, depends. Again, some detail of the lock device for the what we call interlocked. Okay, and then when the alpha door is closed, you can disconnect the container and transfer the product, which is securely and leak tight contained in the container. The key of the system, as I mentioned previously, are the lip seal. One lip seal on the beta, one lip seal on the alpha. So here on this detail uh, video, on part of the video, we can see all the gray area will be, will be sorry, catched between the two door 
to avoid the contamination when we open the alpha door. So thanks to the yellow lip seal, it ensures the leak tightness of the container and the violet one, the interlock for the two doors. Okay, so what I mentioned previously is as uh, RTP system is equipped with safety feature, safety for operation. One is to not be able to open the alpha door when there is no beta connected or properly connected, when say properly connected to have the 60 degrees rotation. Opening when the alpha port, when the beta part is not equipped with the beta door. Okay, this is another safety. And the last one is in operation during the transfer, it should not be possible to disconnect the beta part and then expose the uh, stereo area to the gray one. So I will show you, oh, sorry, Gabriel. Thank you, Charles. And we will continue with an overview on the rapid transfer port solution. And as Charles explains, the rapid transfer ports are based on alpha port, which is fixed and installed on the isolator and the beta port part. So the alpha part uh, has various sizes depending on manufacturer, typically ranging from 105 millimeter up to 350 millimeter or even 460 in some cases. And they can be installed uh, on the vertical wall, which is the most frequent uh, case, as we see on the left picture. But this can also be on the floor of the isolator for waste, for example, or on a tilted wall for component introduction to have a better flow of the component. And also in sometimes on the on the top of the isolator, uh, just to uh, for for different process steps. Uh, so the, 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 the alpha port is um, chosen according to the application. And of course, the main application is the filling line application, as we see on the top left corner, uh, filling line isolator. But we can find uh, alpha port on any other isolator, such as a uh, steric test isolator or uh, any aseptic process isolator. Um, and also uh, frequently toxic isolator if you have dangerous uh, chemical substance, for example. Um, beside the alpha port, um, you then have to select the beta part according to the application. And we have different kinds of beta parts. Uh, first, the reusable containers, which can be either made out of stainless steel, uh, typically for autoclave, or made out of polyethylene, which is the most common material for toxic application. We then have single use solution and we can see on the uh, below picture a single use uh, beta bags for liquid transfer. And then we have uh, all the application for component transfer, which is definitely one of the major application. Um, we have two kind of uh, bags uh, for, for this, the bags which can be autoclaves, which are made out of Tyvek and HDPE, and the bags which can be gamma irradiated, which are made out of PE, EVOHP, or sometimes polyurethane. Um, so then we would like to provide some insight on the ring of concern. What is it and how to manage it? As Charles explains, uh, the uh, rapid transfer port system is based on the lip seals. So the blue lip seal, which seals the alpha flange with the alpha door, and the orange lip seal, which seals the alpha, the, the beta flange with the beta door. Uh, when we connect uh, the beta part and we open the door, then the blue lip seal will seal the two doors, and the orange lip seal will, uh, will uh, seal the two flanges. So by doing so, we make sure that all the contamination is kept outside of the isolator. Uh, and you can see here that the two lip seals are joining point to point. However, in reality, this is not a point. Due to uh, mechanical constraint and mechanical tolerancing, this is rather a very small surface. And this very small surface can be exposed both 
to the outside of the isolator and to the inside of the isolator. And this is what we call the ring of concern. And the first things we need to do is to make sure that this ring of concern does not carry on some contamination. And a very important thing to check this is to perform a validation. And we have first the microbiological validation. And you can see here on the picture uh, an example of how this can be done. Uh, in this case, we have two isolators side by side. On the left side is the, uh, uh, the outside of the, uh, of the filling line, which is typically the dirty area. And on the right side uh, is the clean area, so the filling line area. Then uh, we tune the pressure of the two isolators to put us in a very worst case condition. And this means that we have over pressure from the left side to the right side of uh, plus 120 Pascal. And then we spray on some contamination uh, in, in the dirty area. We proceed to some transfer and we measure after a certain number of transfer the level of contamination that we have in the clean area. And by doing so, we can make, we can prove that uh, the, the RTP system and the ring of concern is not carrying on some microbial contamination. And we also have similar setup with particles validation. And in this case, we can prove, for example, that um, the RTP system is better than a 99.999 HEPA filter. Um, Besides this, we can also prove that after a, a significant number of uh, connection, disconnection, in this case, uh, 1,700, we have no drop in performance. So those results has been published in a white paper entitled Proving the Techniques of DPT System uh, in May 2018. And you can uh, have a look if you want to have more details. So as mentioned, the, the first things uh, to keep in mind about the ring of concern is the validation. And this is very important also to uh, have a joint validation. This is a validation which goes uh, with alpha and beta from the same supplier. The reason for this is that uh, the ring of concern is really a matter of managing the tolerancing and managing the tolerancing of the alpha together with the tolerancing of the beta. This is why this is really important to use same supplier both for alpha and beta because uh, mechanical or even a, a, a leak tight um, compatibility is definitely not the same as a microbiological compatibility. So first things, uh, check that this ring of concern uh, is validated and have a transfer ratio uh, up to log six. Uh, check also that uh, in the field of particle contamination, this is better than a HEPA filter and respect uh, manufacturer tolerancing uh, and use the same supplier. Then if we, uh, beside this validation, we also recommend some uh, SOP uh, to make sure that the contamination is fully under control. Um, the first one is that you can, for example, decontaminate the ring of concern of the alpha part during the decontamination uh, of the isolator. This is performed using what we call the decontamination container, which is connected on the alpha. Um, and then the alpha is opened and during the decontamination, the H2O2 of the isolator will, will decontaminate the ring of concern. So. Uh, then for the beta, you can also implement in your SOP uh, disinfection of the, uh, the beta part uh, also to uh, disinfect the ring of constant part of the beta part. For single use bags, we also can recommend to remove the overwrap at the very latest stage just before the connection to minimize the time where the bags uh, can be exposed to the outside of the isolator. Um, and also in beta bags, we recommend to select beta bags with an inner sleeve, which protect the component um, uh, during the transfer from the ring of concern. And by doing so, really, the, the risk is uh, really uh, well under control. I will now hand over to Charles, who will provide you some further recommendation uh, on what you should look for to have a leak tight. Uh, transfer. transfer system. Thank you, Gabriel. So the question is, what do you look for uh, to um, 
to a link type to ensure validated link type uh, transfer. So at first, to look um, uh, for a partner, we have a large uh, range of alpha ports to cover all the different transfer application may request uh, during the uh, pharma process. Uh, give you some example, 105 currently used for liquid transfer, 190 uh, for component caps, stoppers, uh, transfer, uh, 270 more often for big components or waste management too, and then some other diameter, bigger diameter for, for sure for larger transfer, larger part to transfer or connection isolator to isolator and enclosure to enclosure. And also um, a large range of beta solution like uh, reusable container for sterile or non-sterile application, uh, autoclavable stainless steel container, and rigid plastic container, as mentioned already, uh, Gabriel, for toxic application or uh, also a nuclear application. And uh, the, the beta bag solution, ready to use or ready to sterilize, filled or not filled of component. Uh, just to mention, so uh, beta bag system already qualified and validated single use with possibility of five connection disconnection. To look for a supplier who commit and who is driven by quality as uh, the quality guideline should be at the same level as expected by the pharma industry. This is a key quality, the key uh, uh, all of you, you know that. Uh, and then producing in a facility following all the, the pharma rules. Uh, as an example, um, manufacturing uh, bags, beta bags in a clean room, in ultra clean room, room in the five condition to ensure the high level of cleanliness as requested and driven also by a strong quality system with efficient and tested validated process. It must include robust SOP, um, release test, and incoming outcoming test. And a robust validation program package and all step production step must be documented to stick to GMP recommendation. So included clean room, process, facility, control, and all validation and all documentation must, must be stored in a validation master plan database. All test document of validation must be traceable according to pharma international standard to guarantee the sterility during the transfer operation. It must for sure include some mechanical test mechanical leak test, microbiological test, like uh, bio burden and particle level and the toxin, and safe life as well, to make sure the performance, mechanical and biological, will be maintained over the time. I uh, would like to add that uh, the transfer operation may happen after a certain period of time, not immediately after beta back filling, as an example, or after sterilization. Also, uh, a partner which must be a strongly innovative and able to develop, test, validate, or introduce on the market new solution based on RTP system. A partner, I would say, connected with other party industry, uh, for example, to transfer some new components requested uh, during some uh, during production. A partner which is a state of the art and technology using the latest industrial technology. A partner close to the pharma industry to stick and to give fast answer to the market demand. Also, to look for a transfer solution means to look of a full range of accessories uh, for handling, for help to the transfer, and for transfer different kind of equipment. The RTP must not be only considered as alpha beta, but a real solution for transfer requiring accessories for easy use, 
for all transfer application. Here you have some picture of different examples, covers to protect the lip seal, as mentioned Gabriel, for the, um, the ring of contamination. So you have covers to protect the lip seal, handle for, to help the disconnection of the, the beta, as an example, some specific alpha on membrane for connection for, of big containers like CPS, some metal racks on metal arrangement for autoclavable stainless steel container to be able to sterilize and transfer uh, some machine part of filling machine. And also uh, the dummy container, which is commonly used for the biodecontamination of the alpha parts in place. So um, also the RTP must be tested. The integrity of the lip seal or the integrity of the system, sorry, is guaranteed by the interaction of the two lip seal. So in order to guarantee the integrity and to trace it, it must be tested on a recurrent basis for reusable beta and fixed alpha. The purpose of the TLT, TLT means transfer leak tester, is to check the lip seal integrity. The TLT trace the performance of the system and test independently alpha or beta. It must be, how to say, uh, easy to handle. So thanks to the wireless and pipeless technology, the TLT is easy to carry, easy to handle, whatever is oriented or locate the alpha or the beta. Uh, the TLT is a proven and validated system according and following, sorry, uh, the GMP Annex 1. Then to continue on workability, we can speak about workability. Uh, as a complete system, the manipulation, the handling of the product as a single bag, beta bag for instance, must be done carefully. And it's critical to protect the bag, the bag to avoid any shocks or damage during the transport. Um, it's a, a trolley will assist the operator to avoid painful uh, recurring manipulation that may impact uh, the quality of the connection. And then uh, the goal of the trolley is to help to discharging, having a kind of sloping device uh, when alpha and beta are connected to discharge some component like uh, stoppers and caps. Uh, the trolley is designed and optimized, having the possibility to combine handling of single use bag or rigid beta container. So, Besides the aseptic process, a partner must provide a complete solution for all transfer operation during the pharma process. And especially we look for a fill and finish operation. Uh, it, it must be a total solution provider. It must help the user to design, define, and give the useful recommendation for all transfer operation. According to the previous slide on recommendation, the transfer offer must be a complete solution, including all necessary alpha, beta, trolley, and control system. So having said that, and to summarize, uh, we have covered different applications, liquid transfer, component transfer, cap stoppers, tools transfer, or machine part transfer for autoclave, quality uh, plate uh, or petri dish to be transferred and also toxic material transfer. So um, should, have, should you have a project on interest according to the different applications, so feel free to contact us to discuss in detail. And uh, for sure, dedicated webinar for some applications I just saw here, like liquid transfer and component transfer will come soon. Thank you very much for your attention. And over to Melissa. All right, thank you, uh, Charles and Gabriel. We will now have um, a little interactive session on um, menti.com. So um, here, 
you have access to a QR code so you can uh, scan the QR code with your phone or you also have access um, to the questions on www.menti.com using uh, the code um, here on the screen or you can also um, use the link in the chat function. So I will give you just a few seconds so you have the time to join. The easiest way to join us is by scanning the QR code. All right, so I will now um, go over onto menti.com. All right, I can see that we already have some questions for people joining again. You can join us on menti.com using the code 59082828. And here we'll have some questions. First one is what materials transferred under sterile condition in your process? And here you can add free text. I will uh, give you a few seconds so you can answer that. Right, I can see already some uh, answers uh, popping up here. Um, spinning machine parts, stoppers, um, liquid components, um, tool plates, uh, toxic materials, caps, a lot of things. All right, yeah, I will give you a few seconds again to answer. Feel free to share your answers with us. Okay, I can see a lot of uh, similar answers, a lot of rubber stoppers, a lot of caps, machine parts. Uh, Gabriel, would you like to react to all the answers you see on the screen? Uh, this is, yeah, this is uh, really uh, covering uh, all the main application, even if uh, we often say that the limit is uh, your imagination, um, because we find each day a new possibility. Um, as in the question, we see how we stopping using the pa the pass box. Um, so uh, maybe you can take the question uh, now. Uh, just um, the two technology um, uh, are still accepted, of course. Uh, uh, rapid transfer path technology and pass box are one of the uh, accepted technology by the guidance to introduce material. Um, then uh, both have pros and cons. Uh, rapid transfer system, for example, has the advantage that the the system can be introduced completely sterile, so this is not a decontamination, this can be really a sterile in production. Um, and this is also a rapid system. Uh, and the pass box has, uh, has uh, other advantage, uh, you, you have uh, a larger size and, and, uh, and the different possibilities. So then this is really depending on your risk analysis, on, on your constraint that you can select the best uh, system for the for, for each application. All right, good. Thank you, Gabriel. Uh, we will now move to a uh, second question on the quiz. In which case can the alpha port be opened safely? So here you have three different answers. Uh, this was mentioned by Charles uh, on his slide. So um, three different answers possible. Um, so in which case can the alpha port be opened safely? when the beta system is present and connected, when the beta, beta system is disconnected, or when you connect a beta system without a door. So we'll give you a few seconds uh, to answer this question. I can see that uh, most people are going for the first answer. All right. Let's uh, see which uh, answer is correct. And that's the first one. So the alpha door can, open, can be opened safely when the beta system is properly uh, connected. Uh, Charles, would you like yeah, to- Yeah, I agree, I agree, I agree. This is the principle of the uh, safety interlock equip as uh, a good RTP system. Uh, interlock to avoid wrong operation may corrupt or destroy or break the sterility of the inner environment where it's connected the uh, alpha beta. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right, good. Now, third question. In what application would a Tyvek beta bag be used rather than a PE bag? Here again, three possibilities. Um, so the Tyvek beta bag would be used uh, rather than a PE bag, depending on the type of sterilization method, 
uh, autoclaving versus radiation, or the resistance of the material for different loads, or the transparency of the bag on both sides. Sides, sorry. So, in what application would a Tyvek beta bag be used rather than a PE bag? Good, I can see we still get some answers, but I can see that everyone is aiming for the first answer, depending on the type of sterilization method. So, Gabrielle, do you agree with that? Um, yes, of course, the main driver is the sterilization method. Um, this also um, can depend on, on the way the component can be delivered. Um, if, for example, it's delivered in the form of ready to use component, um, this is uh, often PE bags, so PE bags are, are, are often uh, delivered um, ready to use. And Tyvek bags can be, uh, can be sterilized, autoclave on production site, and also sometimes can also be delivered uh, ready to use. Um, but, but yeah, you have the, the possibility, possibility with the Tyvek bags. Okay, now last question. Which feature do you consider most important when choosing a sterile transfer system? And here you can choose up to three options. And the different options are supplier quality, robust validation, thorough documented testing, um, could be a strong research and innovation partner, a complete alpha beta range with a full range of accessories, or having a total solution provider, meaning that um, the, the private provider should be able to also provide washers, sterilizers, et cetera. All right, a lot of uh, different um, options are being selected. I will give you a, a few seconds more to answer and see if we have uh, some top three um, highlighted. Moving a lot. Okay, all right, I can see a lot of supplier quality, robust validation, a lot of uh, having a total solution provider as well. Okay, that's good. Charles, do you want to react to that? I think the, the six are correct. Uh, three are more focused on quality. Mm -hmm. uh, the first is the quality, some on design capability, and the range of product with the capacity to deliver a solution, a complete solution, with a combination of washer sterilizer to really provide a complete solution. So at the end, it should be a complete solution based on quality. Exactly, you can see that the robust validation also is now uh, in the top three, yeah. Good, all right, so that was our little interactive session on um, menti.com. So now uh, we will have our uh, Q&A session. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, type them in, in the chat function. I can see that we are already getting some answers. I will uh, go into the chat and I will select some answers for the speakers. So feel free to uh, type them in. Uh, I can see the first. Uh, Wait just a second. Okay. I'm going to the first one. Sorry. OK, I think we got at the beginning a lot of questions about the pass box uh, that uh, Gabriel um, gave some answers uh, in the mentee, but we will um, go through them um, again just in case we have some more details. Um, so you gave some example of what is the difference uh, between the rapid transfer port compared to um, the pass box. Um, so what can you just uh, remind us, what's the biggest difference between using a RTP and using the pass box? Is the pass box uh, larger? Yeah, the, the size of course, um, uh, also, the time to rapid transfer is very quick. The pass box, you need the time to, to have the HD, the H2 or two cycles to, to, yeah, to be performed. Um, and also, the, so the pass box is a decontamination. Um, the rapid transfer system can also have the advantage that if the, if the load that needs to be transferred is already sterile, 
uh, with so, so has, has been several, for example, in a transportable container or uh, with gamma radiation, then with the rapid transfer port, you can transfer a system which is really full sterile with a very high degree of uh, of, 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 uh, of uh, stability and quality insurance. Mm -hmm. And people are wondering, uh, will the pass box uh, going to be obsolete? Is it still in use uh, in the future? This is a very good question, Gabriel. Um, I would say, um, transfer system give a lot of flexibility. Having one alpha give a lot of flexibility to connect different beta and prepare in advance. As an example, a beta bag with a stopper is already sterile and qualified, gives a flexibility. A fast box, no. Fast box, you have to wait for the biodecontamination to be ready to, to be ready to use it. And there is nothing about it. The, the question is the sterility at the end. Can you transfer in a sterile way? That's all. Okay, good. You um, can see we have a question as well. Um, are US FDA or uh, EMEA implying to use this? So I guess we're talking about the rapid transfer port system. So, so this is officially in the in the FDA as in the mm -hmm. the, the annex one, uh, the European annex one. This is one of the technology which is. Uh, approved and recommended to introduce material in a, in an aseptic process isolator. So yes, this is uh, it, this is recommended by the guidance. Okay, good. Thank you. I will now go down. So I've seen a question regarding the size of the pass box. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, indeed, this is a larger. Um, However, rapid transfer ports we are, are commonly used with 105 or 190 millimeters, but also uh, can be used with uh, 270, 350 millimeters, or even 460. Yeah. So um, these diameter exist uh, and, and are used. So you can also imagine to transfer uh, significantly large equipment uh, using, uh, for example, a, three, a 350 uh, alpha port with the 350 container. Okay, good. Thank you, Gabriel. We have another question, uh, this time on the integrity leak tester. So can the transfer leak tester be used to test glove or glove ports too? And how flexible is this system? Uh, this is not the same system. Um, basically, this is uh, based on the same technology, which is a pressure decay test. Okay, but we, for sure we don't test the same volume. So now we cannot use a TLT for GLT. This is really a separate application. And the second question is, uh, all suitable and robust are these transfer port when integrated at a certain place of active wrap? It is the same if you, if you use it active wraps, wraps, or an isolator. Uh, you alpha, it gives exactly the same flexibility. You no need to open the wrap to make any transfer. You use the alpha port as an interface. Exactly the same. Exactly. So the GLT transfer leak tester for alpha and beta part are different from uh, the glove leak tester yes. equipment uh, that uh, we have. And I think, um, what do you think about the flexibility, uh, Gabrielle, about the transfer leak tester? Um, so this, this is this is, uh, this is a quite a flexible system as. Um, there is a common base with a trolley and user interface, and then different um, different uh, trans so different test um, uh, test heads uh, according to what you need to test on on your on your line or with your equipment. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this is uh, quite flexible. All right, I will go uh, down. So we have a question here. How, how do you uh, decontaminate? So um, can you clarify? It's a question, yes, please. Yeah, can you clarify what you mean by uh, decontaminate what part? Um, yeah. Often uh, with rapid transfer port, uh, this is uh, sterile. So this is um, more than decontaminated. This is sterilized either with gamma irradiation or with um, or, or with uh, steam sterilization, mm -hmm. um, most commonly. 
Maybe the question is, sorry, Gabriel, maybe the question about the uh, bio decontamination of the alpha port. As we, um, the alpha port is bio decontaminated, so the key surface, especially the lip seal, are bio decontaminate with the bio decontamination on the full environment in the filling isolator, as an example. It's why we show there is some specific dummy container. So during the bio decontamination, the lip seal must be exposed to the bio decontamination agent. This is why it will be open using a dummy container only for the bio decontamination phase. And if we speak about beta, beta part, as mentioned Gabriel, some can be sterilized by autoclave, so autoclavable stainless steel container, Tyvek bag. Some are sterilized by gamma radiation, so to, to provide some ready to use sterile bag empty or filled. This is true, huh? this is another way of, of, uh, of sterilization or biodecontamination. The goal is to reduce six log at the end to have a sterile container and to ensure that the alpha port during the transfer will be sterile too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, now, uh, next question is, what would be the container's leak test, acceptance limits, and uh, rationale? Uh, there is some... Um, we can take the, the question separately because the rationale will be uh, according to the different diameter. Okay, this is some parameter uh, artist can, oh, so, sorry, the parameter are fixed uh, in the TLT uh, recipe. Okay, so uh, when we test, uh, we have the, we define the leak rate, okay, and the acceptance leak rate is done by, by each diameter. There is an acceptance, yeah, an acceptance leak rate. Uh, depending on the diameter and based on the leak rate. And also important is that this, uh, this uh, leak test is performed on every, um, every patch which leaks the factory normally. So it's really recommended to normally in the, in the, the, the delivery procedure of, uh, of a beta part or an alpha part to have this test before the product uh, being released. Do we mention outcoming test? This is typically outcoming test, yes. Okay, good. Uh, we have another question uh, concerning the uh, powder transfer. How robust are these um, systems when it comes to powder transfer? Um, rubber powder transfer. At first, um, Gabriel spoke about the uh, ring of concern. So. Uh, Powder transfer is a good example of contamination, especially because of the ring of concern. So uh, the DPT transfer can be used for powder transfer, yes, in the certain condition, because the, the contamination of the lip seal can be, can be one point, and cleaning. So uh, we have to consider case per case. If you have a specific application, feel free to contact us, and we can see what what kind of beta or alpha we can offer. And specific devices uh, we already have to protect, to uh, take care of that uh, ring of concern, some specific devices we can propose and recommend uh, for cleanability. Yeah, More, yeah and, and, and commonly we recommend to use uh, the, the, the rapid transfer system as a secondary pa packaging mm -hmm. for the powder transfer. So uh, we do not want, um, uh, we do not recommend a direct contact between a rapid transfer beta part and the powder. This we need uh, another, uh, um, yeah, we need an intermediate packaging. Mm -hmm. And I can see that uh, the person has added stale antibiotic powder, humidity sensitive, and temperature sensitive. Uh, it's not depending on the container, the external condition of uh, humidity and temperature sensitive. It's not depending on the container itself. It's depending on the surrounding condition and the filling condition. So uh, we have no uh, control system for humidity and temperature for, for transfer. Yeah, I see that yeah, there is no contact with that. So this is a good thing for, for powder. Yeah. Um, and uh, the, the humidity and temperature sensitive. So we 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 have um, uh, we have a, a range in which we have uh, validated the system, rapid transport system. If we go outside of this range, um, then um, we need to assess the risk 
Um, so in this case, if this is a specific uh, humidity uh, index range or a specific temperature range, um, this needs to be discussed in detail. So we already had some, some application with different uh, uh, temperature and different humidity. Um, so based on experience, we can have risk assessment, but this should be discussed case by case. Mm -hmm. Good, thank yeah. you. Uh, but yeah, this is something to be discussed yeah, more in detail. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, good. If you have uh, any more questions, feel free to type them in. Um, while we're here, I can see in the chat that uh, Christina from the ISP organization has shared with you uh, a little survey form that uh, we would really appreciate it if you can uh, fill in uh, during this Q&A session before leaving the, um, this webinar. All right, um, do you have any more questions? Uh, feel free to, to type them in, um, in the chat. All right, thank you, uh, Christina. She's sending the, um, the form again for you to uh, fill it in on the, on the survey. Um, all right. Um, I think I do have uh, one question uh, for the speakers because when you uh, did mention the um, the multiple connection possibility with the single use, uh, do you, can you give us more information on uh, what's the benefits uh, of being possible to do multiple connection when using single use technology? Uh, yeah, actually, we, this is used in, in uh, two main cases. The first one is, is if you want to use, for example, a better battery introduced material, and then you have waste, so you could use the same uh, part uh, for both waste and um, transfer. Um, and second application would be in the case that you need to split in several um, uh, a transfer release, uh, the transfer, for example, for petri dishes typically, if you want to introduce um, some, some petri dishes which has been gamma irradiated into a rapid transfer beta bag, then you may wish to uh, transfer them uh, stage, stage by stage depending on the use. Uh, and in this case, this is uh, very useful to uh, be able to connect this uh, three or four times. All right, uh, good, thank you. All right, um, so if you have any questions, uh, here you have uh, the contact details from our sales uh, representative in Singapore, Korea, and Thailand, so feel free to contact them. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, I will now hand over uh, to um, Christina from the IC organization again. But thank you for joining us uh, in today's webinar. Thank you, Melissa, Gabrielle, and Charles. That was a very informative session and we hope that everyone enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions or follow up, please feel free to contact them or do let us know and we will forward the information and your questions to them as well. For those that registered, we will send a link for the handouts as well as for the recording of this video. And if you could please help us to fill in the evaluations it would be very much appreciated. So without further ado, we wish you all um, a, a lovely evening. Thank you all for joining us and we hope to see you again at our future events. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 I'm ending the meeting. Take care, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye, Melissa. Bye. -bye. Bye.